Without. Rushing. <laughs> Uh, my character's name is Annie, and she's sort of the spunky gal of the film. Um, she's a reporter, or a journalist, whichever you want to say, and um, she hasn't seen her friend Lita in a long time, and she comes out here basically on a vacation, but she knows something's going on. She can't ever relax, you know. She's always kind of on something, you know. She's a journalist, so I think she's just full of life. I, I have a lot of fun playing her because she's not the love interest you know it's sort of a change for me because a lot of the time I play the girlfriend and this is fun for me because I don't have to play the girlfriend and I I think um, Annie's a little quirkier quirkier than anybody and that's fun to me I rather have that because I think sometimes the way I look kind of puts me in a pigeonhole sometimes and I'm much different than that I, I sort of have a I'm a quirky goofy person or that's how I see myself you know how we see ourselves so I like this because I feel I don't feel like it's about my looks I don't feel like you know people are judging me from that it's it's more about who I am and that's what I like as a person anyway so I'm having a lot of fun playing her because it's not about oh the guy being attracted to me I get to be the one you know to be attracted to the men and and it's fun you know, because it, it, nothing ever really happens, but I feel like I have a lot going on with her that isn't right out there in the lines. There's a lot of subtext going on that nobody knows about, and you'll just have to figure it out when you see the movie. <laughs> so you think there's a little bit of you in the character you play? I personally feel that there's a little bit of you in every character you play. Otherwise, if there wasn't, you'd be acting something that is nothing that you know. I mean, there has to be some of you or it's not real. I mean, that's what I believe. If you're acting something that you have no connection to whatsoever, I don't know how you can act that. Personally, I don't know how to act something I've never felt or done. I mean, you can correlate it, but I believe. That's my belief. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of me and a lot of me that I like to show that maybe I can't show in a lot of different things that I do this side of me I like because it's a very uh, it's a free and fun loving type of a side that I like about myself it's fun it's kind of childlike so I like that so um, when you were when you read this script did you right away think that you wanted to play Annie or I mean, how did you come about decide okay you wanted to go ahead and do this part well I had actually gone in to read for another the the other film subspecies and um, I, I liked it but you know I didn't really connect to it that much and they said why don't you try reading for Annie I said okay and the minute I got the sides which are things you read in an audition I just connected to it for some reason it was really interesting I just I sometimes you just feel a connection and I just thought, this is a great part. And then they, after I got the part, they did a lot of changes and they rewrote a lot of the scenes. And I feel that they made them fuller. And I really like that. Actually, I would, I would choose her over Lita because of just the quirkiness. So, um, before we found out that you and Barbara Kenton have been friends for a long time. So, tell us, what's it like working with someone that you're friends with? It's a blast. I am having such a good time because you don't have to go through that stage of getting to know the person. We already have such a good relationship. You don't have to create that. It's there. And it's so easy. I mean, coming to work is like, you know, we go and run our lines and you're not searching to create a relationship. It's there. So things happen quicker. And that's fun. And we had a scene where we crawl through the tunnel, which you see, and it's hysterical because the lines didn't read hysterically but Barbara and I doing it to one another and our personalities coming out made it so funny I really think it's a, a cute scene it's very funny so it's it's a blast I love it I mean it's just like I go it's like going over to her house and hanging out but we're just work we're getting paid for it <laughs> it's nice so it's really I, I'm really enjoying it and what about the rest of the cast that you're working with Don Michael Paul 
I, it's it's so funny because I've I'd met Don before, so I I knew him before, and so. You know, I, I think he's a wonderful actor, and, and he's a fun guy to be around. He's really a great guy. And, and then Peter Haskell, who I don't get to work with, he is my agent's husband. This is a really, like, small world set. Everybody knows somebody. And, and everybody's just been really... Uh, the first thing I said after the table reading, where we sit around and, and read the movie, read the script through, I said to my agent, I said, it's such a great cast of actors. I mean, they really hired wonderful actors for this. I mean, everybody is, you know, a seasoned professional. So, it's a joy coming to work. You know, everybody knows their, their stuff. You know, they know their lines, they know what they're doing, and it's a treat. You know, because people are really professional and people want to do good work, and, and, you know, nobody's working right now. The business is really, really slow, so it's, it's nice to get a group of people together who are you know, really good working actors to do to do this because you might not have gotten such. You never know. You know, who's going to come together? And and I just think it's it's a fun group. I'm having a ball, and I I, I just you know you never want these things to end. It's are fun. It's really fun. Also, the character that you play is you know, she's not a little like doll that runs around. And, oh, 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 you have a tough role. Do you get involved in some of the, the fighting or the combat scenes? Yeah, I guess we have a scene um, next where I, I, where they start to take over the, the robot and I, I get to hit one of the guys and, and, you know, they start pushing me around and I think that's when Annie's toughness comes out because she, she's, she's not going to be pushed around and I think that's where Annie and Lita have the most in common is they're just, they're strong women. And it's so rare that you get to play strong women. And I like that. I mean, I like that I get to stand up for myself and not be the wimp. You know, the wimpy girl who's in the corner. Ah, help me, oh my gosh, you know. I get to really, you know, stand up for myself. And, and that's what I like to do in real life, so. <laughs> I, I like that kind of stuff. You know, it's fun. I mean, when do you get to punch a guy out? <laughs> As Barb was saying, you know, that was her favorite scene. I heard her say that. I mean, when do you get to do that? It's fun. We live vicariously through these <laughs> things. Now, um, do you do, uh, you don't do any of the work on the blue screen, do you? Um, like, when you're, you're not in the cockpit when you're, or are you? At the end of the film? No. Oh, okay. I, no. I get people No. So no. Really, usually you have more reacting to someone or something that's there. Yeah, but you still have to, I mean, when you're on those sets, we're looking at maybe the spaceship or the, the robot or you're looking at things, I mean, you still have to all the time. Or you, and you have to keep creating the, you know, you're sitting here with all these camera people and everybody's, you know, watching you and you're having to create this moment with somebody standing right there. And that can be a difficult thing. And it's not easy to just do that 50 times over and over and, and, and have real moments, you know? That's difficult. So how would you go about preparing for something like that or making or trying to every day to make it be as natural as possible? Well, for me, I have to do my own homework before I come on the set because it, it, it doesn't always happen to where you can make it real every time. So I do some homework off of the set to where I can create a, a situation for myself that may bring those feelings up in Lisa all the time. So on the set, I just have to keep you know, going over it in my mind because it's not real. You know, you're looking around and you're seeing camera, mics, lights, and, and that can really throw your concentration. So I do a, a good amount of homework just on recreating those feelings that I need in the scene, and then hopefully it'll come up when I'm doing it. So you just have to hope that it's there and let it go and, you know, then it becomes real. Otherwise, you're just acting being scared or acting, you know, it's got to feel real to me, which, so I, I, I feel like I do a pretty good job. <laughs> so what about the character that Don plays? What do you really think about, about Drake or a character, a person like Drake? <laughs> in real life or in, <laughs> in this movie? <laughs> Well, number one, he's very charming. You know, he's, 
He's very charming and he just has this, you know, cute smile and cute way about him. So I initially would be attracted to him. And then, you know, you go, ah, oh, he's a little cocky. <laughs> he's a little full of himself. Um, but I think it's always a challenge. Uh-oh. They need you. They need me. Sorry, I'll be back. <laughs> okay. We didn't have that many babe extras, but I, we had like naked dancers in my movie. Yeah. Though. You know, I was just watching this stuff the other day, and I see this woman dancing with no clothes on on the bar. Monica. Well, hey, hey, I know my audience. <laughs> they love that stuff. God bless their little mentally retarded pointed heads. <laughs> so, whatever you want me to say. Yes. Um, well, to answer the questions, make them in the present as opposed to the past. Like, even though we're doing this after the film is shot. So. Okay. So, like, if I slip, oh, though, okay. you know, oh, yeah. throw something at me. Yeah. Okay. That's the only thing because. Gotcha. So, so, so this is supposed to be like current. Like. Yeah, this is, it's like if we were doing it while you're right. 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 Okay. Transfers. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll be right there, fellas. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay, I'll do that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. But we have Courtney smiling, so that's okay. Okay, Courtney. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, now, on the set of Transfer Spring, this was the first time that you uh, had a chance to direct. What's <laughs> it like to uh, finally be the director and working on a project that you've written? Uh, absolutely terrifying. Uh, but no, actually it was, it was great because I was surrounded by a great group of people. I mean, a terrific crew and also a cast of people that either I had worked with before who I've known forever. Like Andy Robinson, who's playing Colonel Mother, I've known for 10 years. And Tim was in another movie I wrote. So I've known, we've known each other for a long time and we've been friends for a long time. And so that made it all like really, really easy and very nice. And everybody was also super, super supportive of me. And they understood I was a first time director and kind of feeling my way and stumbling around. And they were terrific. Um, you got the whole thing and kind of made it in the past. I did. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So, how is it today? How is it today working as a Okay. Alright. Okay, I think I'm a better answer too. Oh, <laughs> no, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, but I would like it, I mean, but that was the whole. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, um, but, uh, what is it like to actually to be able to direct a script you wrote? Well, answering that question, there it's. That is terrific because if the movie doesn't turn out the way I had envisioned it when I wrote it, now I can't turn around and say, oh, well, the director sure messed it up because I'm him. So that's neat. Uh, directing Trancers 3 as a first-timer, though, is terrific because I'm working with people I've known for a long time. Andy Robinson, I've known since, col since I was in college. I did a documentary, and he was in that, and so and that was like 10 years ago. And Tim Thomerson was in another film I wrote about five years ago, and here he is playing Jack Death, and Tim and I have been friends for a long time. So these guys are here, and they're supportive of me, and it makes it very, very easy. And also the crew has been unbelievably patient and understanding and terrific, because I'm a first-time director, and everybody is like a zillion percent supportive, which is really, really nice. And... Uh, Yes, so, and of course I am making faces, but that's okay. <laughs> so yes. when you were writing the script Transfers 3, yeah. you already knew, you know Tim Thompson, you know the characters. How, was it easy for you to slip into it and just write the script as a continuation of the last one's while still? Well, the thing was, when uh, Charlie and I talked about Transfers 3, uh, we also talked about a new approach for this series. I mean, I was very comfortable with Jack Death and I was comfortable with Tim and his being a private detective, but I wanted to do something that was much more of an action-driven piece, uh, make it much more of a cop movie. And 
and so because I was very comfortable with that kind of material as was Tim and Tim wanted to do something also I think that was more hard-edged and let him really you know have a gun in his hand all the time and shoot people through windows and all the fun stuff so uh, I was totally totally at ease just jumping right in but that's also because we took an approach that uh, I was comfortable with and Charlie Band and Albert Band let me do it which was very nice Absolutely. And um, with the new transfers, with the new, the fact that they can actually fit, now, how'd you come up with trying to get that, you know, making them people as opposed to just zombies? Well, the thing was, with Trancers 3, this is really the origin of the entire Trancer idea. When we were talking about ideas for, for the movie, the concept was where did it come from to, you know, how did it all begin? So my idea of military experimentations and soldiers volunteering to be, you know, used, used as guinea pigs for a drug that would elevate their physical prowess at, in the field and allow them to be better fighters seemed to fit exactly within the framework of the way the Trancers had behaved in the other two movies. And my thinking was, well, since the other two movies actually take place after this one, uh, time-wise, not, you know, uh, from a chronological standpoint, then Trancers by, you know, could have evolved into the kind of zombies that you see in the other movies. But I wanted uh, to start them off in a different area and watch the experiment go wrong because we were really just starting at ground zero. Oh, the casting was, was terrific. First of all, of course, the movie was pretty much half cast when I started it because I had so many characters who were carrying over from the other films, like Helen Hunt and Megan Ward and Telma Hopkins. So that was, that was all set and ready to go. Uh, Melanie Smith, who played RJ, uh, she came in, she was just, she was terrific, and we wanted, this was something that Charlie liked and I liked, and also Tim, is that Jack Death always plays better if he has a partner opposite him, and it's always nice if it's a woman. But I also wanted someone, and they kind of did this with Megan and Trancers too, I wanted someone who could handle a gun. I wanted someone who could be Jack's equal in a combat situation, which we see in the movie, which is nice. And the fact that they're attracted to each other, but, you know, they never get together. I also like that because that's kind of film noirish, and, you know, I love you, baby, but I got, you know, somebody to kill, you know, uh, which, which is cool. Uh, but, no, the, I mean, the cast, I was, and I would just say this whether we were doing this or not. The cast in this movie is just top to bottom, but... Um, Okay. So, so no, I mean, just saying about the actors that top to bottom, I was really, really lucky to get a terrific cast together. The acting in the movie is really excellent. And we had some very, very experienced, very big, recognizable actors, people like Helen Hunt and Andy Robinson, and everyone was all jazzed because, oh my God, we've got the villain from Dirty Harry. <laughs> The hero, the true hero of Trancers Three, Adolfo Bartoli, my my magnificent director of photography. Thank you. And but uh, no, like having these uh, some younger actors in the movie, like uh, Randall Keith, who plays this kind of young man who joins the transfer corps, it's like, because he thinks he's like joining the Marines, and working with someone like Andy Robinson, he's like, oh my gosh, it's the bad guy from Dirty Harry, and I love him, and this is great, and he's playing the baddie. I mean, everybody just got jazzed and generated by that, and we reached a level of performance from all these people that is amazingly consistent, and uh, I don't think I could take too much credit for that, because they really did it themselves. They were just great. 
and made me look really good, frankly, you know? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's incredibly important because just my own experience as a screenwriter, uh, the actors, it's one thing to sit alone in a room and you write something down on a piece of paper and you imagine how it's going to be. Well, you take that piece of paper and you're down on a sound stage and you have a crew and you have a cast and they're then, you know, trying to bring this thing to life. Everyone is, they're going to look at it, they need to interpret it, they need to feel comfortable with it to actually bring out the best in the ideas and bring out the best of what you've conceptualized on paper. It's not something that's written in stone. And so I completely welcomed it because, you know, I think of these things in my head, but these people have to make it work like flesh and blood and they're the ones who are actually in front of the camera, so absolutely. No, it's, it's like the most important thing. If the actors aren't comfortable with what they're doing, they won't be as good in the scenes, and then that defeats the whole purpose, and you don't end up with anything. Now, uh, the previous transfer is Charlie Mann, director. Yes. So uh, you're coming in as the new kid on the block. Yes, indeed. So uh, do you feel that Charlie's a hard act to follow? Charlie, uh, I would say that, you know, I was very, very complimented overall that uh, as my first film as a director that this was the movie that I ended up doing. Uh, Charlie really gave me the keys to the Rolls Royce in a way because the Trancers films are considered like the top of the line full moon product. They always get the best casts, and the biggest names and everything else and they allow the freedom but uh, oh actually and absolutely a particularly hard act uh, to follow because I was a huge admirer of Trancers 1. I, I think it's a terrific movie. And uh, in fact, I reviewed Trancers 1 for The Hollywood Reporter, which I don't think Charlie even knows. Um, but uh, so, I, you know, I went in there as a fan of the series in the first place and also suddenly given this, you know, terrific opportunity. And, uh, and it, was, it was super. So I was, I would say, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> yes, Charlie. Uh, Yes, I do admire you very much. <laughs> How far back do you and Charlie go? I first worked for Charlie Band. Uh, gee whiz, what was that? About six years ago, excuse me, five years ago, uh, I wrote a movie called Prison for uh, Empire. And uh, then after Prison was made, I hung around Empire and we did rewrites on some projects and uh, did some work on some other things and then um, I went off to do other movies, Charlie went off to do his other projects and then when Full Moon popped up here uh, about a year ago, Charlie approached me about writing Puppet Master and then we got back together again. Should I do my? Oh, I know what it was. Should I do my impression of Albert? Go ahead. Uh, what I wanted to know is, while directing this film, um, is the idea that you had while you were writing it? Are you? Is it actually looking like what you wanted? Is the tone pretty much the same? Is it? Uh, actually, yes, absolutely, and that's because I've got this terrific support group, and everybody was in sync with what I wanted to do, which was I wanted to make an action movie. I said, we really want to push this right to the floor and do something very hard-edged, lots of gunplay, lots of tough stuff. And everybody's gotten into it completely, so yeah, which is, which is neat. Um, and, uh, question, which is neat. Well, that's not intelligent. Yes. What? That's okay. Kevin Foster can say it. Hey, so can I. Okay. Um, Albert. Hey, it looks like shit. No, go ahead. What? What's that schmuck doing? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes, go ahead. That's <laughs> kind of a stupid question here. Did you always want to be a director? Absolutely. Um, 
and I was uh, told time and time again that the best way to get the chance to direct anything was to write. And so, Trancers 3 is the tenth movie I've written that's been produced in the last eight years. And so, and I finally got my chance to direct. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I was interviewing Tim, he mentioned to me that you actually got to direct it. You're going to direct another film now? Or I've, been, I've been offered uh, a couple of movies already uh, since starting on Trancers 3, but you just have to see what's going to happen. I mean, everyone goes, oh, baby, baby, we love you. <laughs> and then, you know, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, yes. Um, uh, unfeeling offers, uh, Mark. <laughs> now, um, also part of the, the thing that happens all the time on our films is the DP, the director of photography, although it was Italian, yes. he often has an Italian cameraman. Oh. Uh, yes. No, sure. The director of photography of all of is Italian. Mm -hmm. The cameraman, Tani, is Italian. Yep. You have, um, I don't remember who else there is, but all these Italian people working on camera. What's yeah. it like working with Italians who, you know, are talking to themselves and oh. <laughs> Actually, no. Actually, Adolfo was was just terrific uh, with me. He, uh, we sat down. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry. No, uh, off the top of my head, answer. Um, all right, all right. No. <laughs> Adolfo is absolutely terrific, and he was great in the prep of the movie. We sat down many, many times, discussed the visual style I wanted and what he would would how he would help me get it and he's been s just absolutely super and when the uh, Italian discussions come up I just stand there and kind of nod my head and go mm-hmm 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 but Albert bands around a lot and he speaks Italian so they discuss it among each other and I go so are we gonna shoot and then they go yes uh, very good <laughs> that's it so it didn't really create any problems no not at all and uh, and it, he really, again, Adolfo went way out of his way to help me out because he knew I was a first-time director. And he was very, very generous with me, which was uh, really lovely. Okay. So. Unless you have any last-minute uh, um, wisdom. Well, to all you very young, aspiring uh, young filmmakers out there, uh, don't stick your tongue in light sockets. Uh, that's about well, my, my big piece of advice. That's for all the basic Fangoria crowd who are going to be like going nuts when they see this movie because it's like, you know, semi-nude girl lying in bed with the star of Hellraiser, you know, wearing a K&B makeup appliance. I mean, that's like, uh, you know, material for those guys forever. Oh, in uh, Jana, you know, in bed with Colonel Mother? Oh, the... The Fangoria nerds are gonna go ape shit. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> the devoted Fangoria readership, uh, of whom I have the utmost respect, uh, will truly appreciate the uh, intention of that scene. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now we. Now we. Oh, I didn't even know. I was just talking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, are you kidding? We look at that scene. I had some friends in the editing room. They were watching. Oh, they were going crazy because. It's, oh, no. This was like the Fangoria ultimate. You know, they're the fantasy. Okay. Okay. So we're cool. So is that? That's it. We're cool. That's it. Neato. Yeah. So the ideas are one here and one there. So the idea is that, that and you walk into this position, you're all you're surrounding these people. So you kind of separate little yeah, so one here, one here, one here, and another one from here. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Good. Good. Directors on the set. Very quiet. Thank you. Where are the other two? Oh, it's here.
Yes, sir. I'm at this Yeah, one, two, three. We're still on a bell. Uh, where, where's our other issue? Oh, 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 here he is. I'm sorry. I didn't see the jacket. I looked for the red jacket. Yeah. <laughs> you took your thing off and then right. <laughs> okay, so you can I go off the bell? What? Are we on a bell? We've been on a bell all this time? We Excuse are. me. No, we're not. Not. You're not. You're not. You're not. They are guarding no. this area. No, well, the director's on the set. If it's quiet, leave it that way. Mark Bridge. Yes, sir. All righty, rehearsing.